a short tutorial video explaining the paints, the colours and their uses. Now we'll talk about paints and colours. I'll give you a full list of the colours before we go much further. There's white, burnt umber, Prussian blue, cobalt blue, pathalo blue, ultramarine blue, violet, indigo, warm red, cool red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, viridian, pathalo green, warm yellow and Indian yellow. The colours are the same for oils or acrylic. In fact, the colours are the same for watercolour too, and you can follow along in watercolour, or if you want to do it in coloured pencil even. In most of the lessons, I'll be using acrylic paints. I find it cheaper and much easier to clean up. The acrylic paint these days is very good quality. Now, seeing you're learning to paint, and you're learning to teach others to paint, it's not necessary to buy expensive paints. You should learn to use the student quality acrylics or oils. There's two colours you might need to buy in the artist quality and that would be the thalo blue and Indian yellow. The full list of colours is quite a long list. You might not want to buy some of the colours. You might not want to use the violet or the indigo blue and you can get away with Prussian green or pathalo green rather than the viridian if you wish. You can paint away for months in burnt umber and white and if you do you'll be very well rewarded because you'll learn a lot about tones and you get very familiar with the brush strokes. Prussian blue is another colour that you can paint with in mono colour, Prussian blue and white. So let's have a look at the colours. White, titanium white for oils. In acrylics, white is often labelled blank or just white or titanium white. Burnt umber. This is a strong dark brown. It always seems to be just right consistency when it comes out of the tube. Prussian blue. Prussian blue is the colour of the night sky. It's very handy for painting moonlight scenes. It's great to paint mono colours in. You do not have to have Prussian blue, but it's a handy colour. Cobalt blue. We use a lot of cobalt blue. This is for your distant mountains, and we make the greys when we mix it with our crimson, and we add a little bit of raw sienna. Cobalt blue is often called cool blue. Pathalo blue is a very strong pigment and ideal for blending with the white for our midday skies. It's too strong to make greys with. If you try to mix it with other colours, it becomes overpowering. So the pathalo blue is for our skies. Ultramarine blue can be used for the colour of a morning sky. Ultramarine blue has a lot of red in it. It's quite a warm blue. Violet. There's quite a few different violets. I think cobalt violet is my favourite. If you wish to use the violet for your violet paintings or for painting jacaranda trees, pick a very strong violet. Indigo is more or less Prussian blue and black. It's a good colour to work with if you want to do some monocolours and if you want to paint a stormy sky. Indigo, like violet, is not 100% necessary in this course. Warm red is fire engine red. There's many warm reds. Cadmium red is probably the most common warm red. Vermilion is another warm red, quite common. Cool red is simply crimson. Alizarin crimson is very common. The crimson is for the background reds and we mix it with the cobalt blue and a little bit of raw sienna to give us the greys. Burnt sienna is a red. It's an earthy red-brown. We use it for painting in our roadways, for the sun shining on the rocks. We put it in the bark of our trees and it looks good on the rusty roofs of sheds and houses. Raw sienna is a yellow. It's a faded yellow that we use in the background. We use quite a lot of raw sienna. 
We use this for our base colour for our distant greens. Viridium is a dark green. It's the colour of a leaf or foliage right in front of your face. So we never use this very often straight out of the tube. It's just too strong a green. But it's a great tint to put through your paintings. And if you use it right from the background tones of green to the foreground tones of green and mix it in with your colours just a little bit, it'll give you the same tone right through your painting. This makes your painting look very natural. The phthalo green is a brilliant rainforest coloured green. It's transparent and it looks great when you do monocolour paintings with it. Prussian green is very much the same. Warm yellow. Warm yellow is any yellow that is warm. And you can tell it's warm because it looks more like an orange than a lemon. Cadmium yellow is possibly the most common warm yellow. Indian yellow. This is the colour of a golden wheat field in the sunlight. Indian yellow though, is marketed under some other names sometimes. Art Spectrum, the Australian paint manufacturer, have an Indian yellow, but they also have an Australian red gold, which I prefer. Matisse have Australian Sienna. So the colours you really need most of are the white, you need plenty of white, cool blue, crimson or cool red, warm yellow and raw sienna. The next on your shopping list should be the Bethalo blue and the Indian yellow. So you can kick off with just a few colours but I think the burnt umber and white is the best to kick off with and practice away in the mono colour paintings. Medium. Someone might say to you, what medium do you paint in? It means, do you paint in oil paints or do you paint in acrylic paints? And they say, what medium do you thin your paint with? Well, you can thin your oil paints with an oil painting medium and the water paints, which is acrylic paints, you thin them with water. Now, with your oil paints, I thin my paint with kerosene. I know it's not traditional, but it's easy. It doesn't smell so bad and it's oily which makes the paint nice and runny. Now there's video also on how to thin your paint. So medium simply means what you thin your paint with, terps or water. When you finish your paintings, you may wish to spray them. I use an artist picture varnish, a matte varnish, which comes in a pressure pack can. I lay the painting flat on the ground face up and I give it three or four or five coats of varnish by spraying from about two foot above it. You can do this if you wish, but I think you should wait until we get very good at our paintings before we spend time worrying about that. Now let's have a look at brushes in the next video.